Right, so while Russia has rejected the allegation that its president is a war criminal, despite the International Criminal Court's arrest warrant, it has publicly steered clear of offering any recommendations on how the BRICS summit in South Africa should handle the potential appearance of Vladimir Putin. Whilst the possibility remains that he might attend, the Kremlin says it's too early to decide. So on that note, we're going to be joined by Zoom by Professor John Strimlau from the Department of International Relations at the University of the Witwatersrand. A very good afternoon to you, Prof. Thanks for your time with us here on the ACBC. Thank you very much. Perhaps in South Africa assessing its options around hosting the uh, BRICS summit. I wonder how the issue of a venue change has come up as a possible solution to what is transpiring in relation to the arrest of Vladimir Putin. How would you weigh in on those dynamics that are unfolding on the back of the uh, BRICS meeting that was held with the foreign ministers recently? Well, we're all speculating, and it's a little bit early to know for sure what the government is thinking. Now, yesterday's Sunday Times had a uh, front page story that you've probably seen that has the Secretary General of the party, Fikele Mabulela, uh, suggesting that Putin would not be insulted if he was asked not to attend in person in light of the, uh, the South Africans being a party to the International Criminal Court, which has indicted him. Uh, that is the party secretary general speaking. It's not the government. And the government really has to make a decision based on foreign policy concerns. And I don't think they have reached that point yet. So, so on the back of that, with Putin's arrest, prompting South Africa to weigh moving the uh, BRICS summit. What, what is the likelihood? What do you think are the implications? What are the message that is also being sent if such options are being thought about and perhaps uh, entertained? Well, Minister Pandor was very clear that it would be August 22nd, 24th in Johannesburg. And that has not been overridden to my knowledge at all. And I don't think that any of the other BRICS members have indicated a willingness to have it shifted to, say, China, which is not a party. And by the way, the United States and Ukraine and Russia and China are not parties to the International Criminal Court. That is a, re is a regretful situation in my mind. And I really hope that South Africa can be true to its founding principles that are emphasizing human rights concerns above all. John, with the clock ticking, in your opinion, is there enough time to resolve and get what uh, get done what needs to be to, to be done ahead of the BRICS summit that's scheduled for uh, for for later this year? Well, you're talking to someone who followed the deficit uh, debate in the politics of the United States fairly closely. And that was a, a hair the decision. And this decision will be made, I am confident of. And it is linked to the process that the BRICS could play in a peace arrangement should it come to that. And I think that, that, that Putin would be realistic enough to know that he w is treading on, on, on very difficult ground with regard to South Africa's standing in the International Criminal Court. And by the way, in August, there could be an offensive by the counteroffensive by the Ukrainians that will keep Putin understandably in Moscow for both military reasons to com command the battles on the ground, but also because of the dangers of a coup that he is always at the risk of in, a, in an authoritarian system like that prevails in Russia today. What are your thoughts then on the possibility of a new common currency for international trade as an alternative to US dollar in an effort to avoid the impact of san sanctions over the, the war in the Ukraine then at this point? Well, it's not going to come soon. Sure. Uh, the Yuan is bidding for uh, a, a, a parity with the with the dollar, and that is probably going to happen at some point, but I don't think it can happen in the near term. The real concern that should be uppermost in our mind is getting a peaceful resolution of this god-awful crisis in Ukraine that is causing such devastation and so much human suffering on both the Soviet Russian soldiers, but also obviously 
the human uh, toll that it is taking on the civilian population of Ukraine, and, and then the collateral damage to Africa in, in, in grain uh, ex exports here and fuel and other uh, commodities that are driving our inflation that is so bad uh, for South Africans. So uh, we, we, we really want to prioritize getting a peaceful solution to this conflict. And I think that the BRICS can play a constructive role in that process. And then the West and the and 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 uh, can and the Europeans and the Americans can play on on Zelensky's side and maybe bring this god awful crisis to an end. No, absolutely, Prof. I think just also because the BRICS block controls about or is responsible for about 40% of the world's 8 billion population. So obviously there's a lot that's at stake and a lot of people set to, to be impacted further by what is transpiring. I wonder on the point of South Africa considering removing itself from the ICC as well. Do you think that's also um, the better move to make? How would you weigh in on the implications that emerge from that given the geopolitical landscape um, unfolding? Again, this is a government decision, and it, it would really be a betrayal of the traditions, the great traditions of the South African Constitution as an example uh, to the world. And I, I would hope that it wouldn't come to that. I, I think that there are enough smart people working this issue that they can find a way through uh, this uh, uh, forest and, and to the other side. And if that means that, that, that Putin doesn't show up in Johannesburg in July, so be it. He ought to be enough of a realist to know that he doesn't need to cause problems for the South African uh, government and whether or not they have a relationship that is independent of this with the party is for the party and the, um, and, and the, and the Russians to, to, to resolve, just as they have done in the United States because Trump and uh, Putin have a special relationship going back to the bailout of his, uh, his, his debts. And so the speculation in the Times yesterday about financial uh, support for the African National Congress, the ruling Congress, is just that. It's the party, and the party needs money, but the government is separate from the party, or should be. Mm. John Stremler, we're the going national to the interest. Com no, absolutely. We'll leave the conversation there. Thank you very much um, for joining us and for those sentiments that you've echoed. Um, Professor John Stremler is from the Department of International Relations at the University of the Witwatersrand, um, South Africa, under increased uh, pressure to make a decision on whether Vladimir Putin is going to be attending the BRICS summit that is scheduled for August. Again, thank you to Professor John for weighing in.